be quite honest, I'm not sure if I can follow much today after all's been, I came in when you were praying and the other prayers that was prayed is like, wow, Lord. <laughs> Same thing that was in my message. Worship was in my message. So I almost feel like I'm praying to the choir now or praise preaching to the choir. I don't particularly like necessarily for me the term preaching. Uh, the scripture talks about uh, when you come together, one will have a psalm, one will have a song, one will have a word of wisdom, one will have a word of knowledge, one will prophesy, one will speak in tongues. Uh, and Paul also talks about it is it's for the edification of the body. Um, I've been on this all week. It isn't that I've been trying to prepare the message all week. I've been in communion with the Lord, <laughs> simply. Uh, the Lord's challenging me. I've had the faith. It takes faith to become saved. It takes the faith to walk so that you walk uprightly and not sin. It takes faith to believe God for supplying all your needs. Sometimes to me it takes faith just to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> but with all of that, I'm going to read here a little bit. I got into my uh, Vines Expository Dictionary of the New Testament. Uh, there's three words here that I'd looked up. Believe, truth, and actually truth is trust and faith. Now believe, the definition was to believe, also to be persuaded of, and hence place confidence in. To trust signifies in the sense of the word, reliance upon, not mere credence. Truth, true, truly, actual, true to fact, primarily unconcealed, manifest. Conforming to reality, indeed, God fulfills the meaning of his name, signifies that he is voracious, true to his utterance, he cannot lie. Faith, primarily, firm persuasion, a conviction based upon hearing, always of Faith in God or Christ or in things spiritual. The main elements in faith in its relationship to the invisible God as distinct from man. A firm conviction proceeding a full acknowledgement of God's revelation or truth. A personal surrender to him. A conduct inspired by such surrender. Object of Abraham's faith was not God's promise. His faith rested in God Himself. His believing was the exercise of His faith. Um, I go with the scripture. 
think it's Ephesians 2, 8. He says, you've been saved by grace through faith, and faith not of your own. It's the gift of God. I've, I've kind of struggled in my early life as a believer. Uh, I was uh, always busy, sometimes busy doing nothing, <laughs> but I always kind of had an excuse. I couldn't get into the Word. I was too busy. I had to work. I had to cut grass. I had to clean this, clean that, help do the cooking, help give the kids baths, and Besides being a carpenter, doing physical work, I was tired. I was going to bed. <laughs> and years and years went by. And just in discussion with the Lord, I was discovering that I'm lying to myself. I have no excuse. But... uh I've always trusted for the salvation. I had little trouble trusting him for supplying my needs. A lot of times the Lord don't answer those prayers till the 11th hour and the 59th minute and the 59th second. He's testing me to see if I believe, testing me if I'll trust him, testing me if I'll have the faith to do the believing, to do the trusting. So I won't say it was not that long ago, but it's out of 35, almost 40 years, I guess probably the last 10 is when I've come to trusting him to supply all my needs. Try not to get ahead. I know for a fact that if he knows the hairs on my head, he knows everything about me more than I do myself. If he is willing to throw the beauty out on the flowers of the earth to show his glory, to supply the birds with the necessary food to survive, he can do that for me. Uh, I've never really been a materialistic person. I was just willing to live comfortably. Didn't take much to make me happy. Uh, but I just kind of didn't want to get involved. I did not. I fought almost all my life. You can see how short I am. I was always picked on, always bullied, and I always ran. I was fearful. But one day, I had had enough of the biggest bully in grade school, and I let loose on him, and it was like, oh my God, what'd you just do? And from that day on, he never bothered me. And we got along. I just told him, I said, I don't know why you act the way you do to everybody, but I'm done. Now, next day I had, it was seventh grade. I had five sixth graders try to beat me up after school. <laughs> I was fearful because it wasn't just one person, it was five of them. I'm telling this story for the fact that I didn't go home with a scratch. They went home with torn raincoats, black eyes. <laughs> and I didn't fight because I thought I was tough. I fought because I was in fear for my life. <laughs> so as I got older, I just wanted to Live in peace. 
I just didn't want to be bothered with anything. Just leave me alone and let me live my life. And to be honest, I was saying that to God. Before I was, he knew me. Before I was born, he had a, a plan for my life. For good, not evil. When I got saved, I understood that much. I can feel my skin touching each other about I was set free. After a while, it was like, what for? It was to have a relationship. It, it's all about relationship. But that relationship involves, intertwines with so much. And it, 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 it's involved with God's very nature the very nature that God created in me when I became new. I love Jonathan said, you know, we have a new name. <laughs> We're created in his image now. We've, we've been, yes. So the, the idea of being just, I'll come to church, I'll praise, I'll worship, I'll fellowship a little bit, and I'll go home. But that's not it. I've always felt right off the bat that I had a calling, a powerful calling at that. And I think, who am I, Lord? I'm just this little bitty guy, not known. Nobody probably even cares what I say. And then as I went through the scriptures, Abraham, granted his family was wealthy, but God called him out. And that faith that I talked about is not mine, it's his, but he drops it in us. When we become born again, we have that faith of God, of Jesus Christ. Not our own faith, it's his faith. And we we're responsible for so much. And I know I'm responsible for so much that I don't even understand what it all is, what it's all about. But like Abraham, he heard God tell him to come out from amongst your family and I will lead you to a land that I will give you. Not a sidetrack, but every step Step that he stepped. God gave it to him. So therefore, we being the sons of God and the daughters of God, the children of God, we have that same promise. So, getting back to faith... I'm not preaching. I'm trying to edify. I'm trying to encourage here. So I want you to receive that. That responsibility I talked about on what God's given me is I have to come out of the comfort zone. I have to step out when I hear him say, step out. Because I'm not here anymore. 
I know the old Bill Patterson still tries to raise up and be known and be in control. But I have to pick up my cross and die daily. Now, I believe there's se several facets of faith. And I do know you can't come to the Lord unless he calls you. But when he calls you and you believe, that deposit from heaven comes down. So we have a certain level of faith to believe for salvation. We have a certain level of faith to believe for our needs, not necessarily our wants, but our needs. Because he said, all my needs will be met. Now, I think there's another level of faith too, and that is to exercise the part of our relationship with him. And exercise is not just getting into the word, because I can read two books in the Bible, and an hour later, I've probably forgotten what I read. I think it also details getting before in your prayer place. You don't even have to worship. You don't have to have to pray, but sit there in his presence and eventually he will speak to you. It's an exercise. So now, Jesus, when he started his ministry, the scripture says, at the end of the day, he would go be alone with the Father. Amen. He spent time with the Father. And because Jesus was not only God, he was man, I firmly believe in my heart. I could be wrong, but I believe in my heart that, because he, he said, each day has enough of its own to deal with. Tomorrow's another day. So what I'm saying is I firmly believe when he went to be with the Father in the evenings that he was having communion. He was having conversation with his Father. And his Father was telling him what's going to happen tomorrow. I, I, I just believe that. So... As far as faith goes, the scripture says this is where it starts. It's with the communion of the Lord. Now, I, I, just a little side note. Someone told me this about 25 years ago, and I completely forgot about it until I was having communion with the Lord this week over this. We're supposed to tithe. And God give, gives us a promise if we tithe. And back in the scripture, Abraham gave 10% to Melchizedek. Okay. Now, that was something God provided to Abraham. And God gave him 10%. But this person told me about 25 years ago, did God give you time Time? What if you gave a tithe of your time to the Lord? Do you know how much more effective we would be for what God's called us to do? 
Now, I do know he's called us to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's for sure. But we can't all just start running around doing this, that, and the other. But he does have a part for each and every one of us. Like I said, every step we take is ours. It could be walking through Walmart, walking through the grocery store. It could be going for a walk. It could be meeting friends. It could be meeting your relatives. It could be going to a hospital. We need that faith to be that witness. The word says, be ready to give your testimony of your faith so that so that you can have a door open to share the gospel so uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I believe in dreams and visions I believe a lot of the dreams and the visions we have because of being a child of God come from God. I'm going to give you a little example. Very, very early, uh, I had a, a dream. Well, maybe not that early. I'm going to go back about 20 years. I had a, a, a dream or a vision about opening a, up a, a venue where I could get kids to come to, to where it was safe. They could play a little pool. They could play ping pong. They could uh, play the air hockey. Uh, there was a stage there where talented kids could come up and play guitar with a controlled environment of that and then to be able to to share the gospel to them and I saw this happening to the point where I, I saw this kid getting ready to head out to the to the venue place and his dad was sitting there drinking a beer with his T-shirt on and the big belly showing. And he goes, where are you going? And he goes, I'm going to my father's house. That's what God called this place. Because it's a house of prayer. And I got inspired enough in the school district that I've lived in, which was uh, R1 Northwest in Jefferson County. And I got in a phone book, but you don't see them anymore. But I looked up all the churches, excuse me. I looked up all the churches and I wrote a letter and sent it to all of them because I wanted it not to be about me. I wanted it to be about the unity of the body of Christ doing this. And I sent them all a letter, 27 letters. One person responded, if you could get five more people, this, this pastor wrote, five more people or 10, I can't remember. I will be happy to come to a meeting and try and see what we can do to make this happen. It was the only one, but in my faith, I wrote that letter, but in my doubt, I didn't keep believing. I let it go. Now, maybe this is something for someone down the line, like Abraham was promised a seed, and your descendants will be like the, the sand on the seashore, or the stars in the heaven. But God's encouraging me He's not just encouraging, he's challenging me to step out 
because I know something is about to happen. In the last days, the spirit of Elijah is going to be poured out. And I want to be part of that. I'm sure all of you want to be part of that. So I'm encouraging everybody to believe. Then trust. And the scripture says for us, let me back up. The apostles came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith. And he said, if you have a mustard seed, which is that little seed that's given to us. But the scripture also says for us to stir up our most holy faith. Eric's young. Maria's young. You're young. <laughs> yes, in the Lord. <laughs> What I'm getting at is God's challenging all of us to dream. Ask, ask him for dreams. Ask him for visions. Uh, he knows the desires of your heart. If you're young and looking for, wanting a husband, say, Lord, I can't find the perfect one, but you can find the best one for me. And it's the same way with ministries. You got to start somewhere. And for an example is I've been complaining <laughs> about what's been going on with politics and government, how the election was stolen about how all of a sudden things year and a half ago wasn't in public display, but now is. They're wanting to groom our young children. They want them to be gay, queer, whatever the word terminology is. And they're fight, wanting to fight DeSantis, our own favorite Disney world. And I didn't like the concept of, you know, corruption in the elections. So I was saying to myself, how can I complain? I'm not doing nothing about it. I went and found out through emails, through texting, and I found out the lowest place I can start, and that's in my township. It's Jefferson County's got 11, 12, like, precincts. And the one I'm in, I found out where it is. And then I found out how I can become a committee man. My name's on a ballot. <laughs> I'm going to be either passed up on the election or I might get elected come this this uh, April 5th and uh, you can't you gotta you gotta be you can pray for me <laughs> but as an average citizen it's hard to make your voice heard about the only thing you can do is get into an organization to know what's going on and cumulatively make your voice heard. But as a committee man, you can make your voice heard up the next level, the chain of command, so to speak. So make our voices heard. Let me see if I can get back to where I should be. I talked to, I'm going to, she ain't here, but I'm using her. <laughs> I was talking to Sue about 
you know, this thing that I was trying to put together here. And uh, she goes, that's funny you say that because I was praying about uh, should I keep my lawn guy or should I get a new one? <laughs> that's trivial, <laughs> but it's so true. And I says, well, pray about it. And it wasn't, I think, an hour later or so, the guy called that was her lawn guy and says, do you still want to use me this year? And it's like, oh, my Lord. She's saying, oh, my Lord, you answered me. <laughs> he cares about every little detail. So dream, dream, pray, get in the closet, and just sit there. You might fall asleep, but next time you get in the closet, sit there and wait and wait and wait. Those that wait upon the Lord will not be disappointed. So trust for a wife, trust for a husband, trust for a good job, Trust the Lord that he will reveal to you your calling, your purpose. I've tried and tried and tried to figure out what it is. I know the Lord told me a number of months, I mentioned it to John, when I was discussing with the Lord, why am I here? What's my purpose? And I heard, and it wasn't audible, but it was loud enough my spirit sure heard it. You were made for the altar. I'm still trying to f discover that, but I do know we all have that calling to sh share our testimony of why we believe in Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. And tell them about the plans that he's got for us so father I pray in the name of Jesus that they can receive this word from you not me father you love us you have desires for us our, you have plans for us and what when your word goes out it will accomplish what it will accomplish what you intended to accomplish. So bless each and every one of us and stir up our most holy faith. That is us. Stir up our most holy faith. God bless you.